My name is Chris McQuay with Unobtainium Welding and today we're going to talk about pulse settings on your Everlast PowerTig 255 EXT. So why do we want pulse? I consider pulse and advanced setting something you should move on to once you're an accomplished welder. But the whole idea is to minimize heat input and maximize penetration. So in theory, with your pulse settings correct, you could get a deeper penetrating weld that's narrower and puts less heat into the work than if you're welding it straight DC. Okay, so before we get into the machine settings, let's talk about what pulse actually is. What is it doing and why do we care? So our straight DC current is basically a straight line. So we get, if we ask for 70 amps, we get 70 amps, but with pulse, we're allowed to have these small spikes and then this off time where we don't have the maximum amperage for it to cool down. So we can have this blast of amperage and some off time, blast off. And it can look like this where you have a lot of on time or it can look like that where you have just a quick blast and most of your time is actually spent on the background amps or the off time. So let's look at the actual pulse here. So we set our max amp, so that's the amps that you actually set on the machine. That's the amplitude. Then you have your pulse time. So how much time are you going to spend at the max amperage? And then you have your pulse amps or your background amperage. So when it's not on the max amperage, what is it on? And do you want, generally want that number pretty low? And it's based on a percentage. So we might have 150 amps set on the machine. Our pulse time on in this here would be about 80% and our pulse amps or our background amps might be as low as 5%. But then you can see here, this tall and skinny one would be more like 200 amps with a pulse time of maybe 25%. And then our background amps, the same five amps, but of course, because we're only using 25% on the max amps, we're gonna have 75% on that background amp. Okay, so let's go over to the machine and we'll go through how to set this up. So when we're starting to set up pulse, we have to remember that we have to set the actual amperage we want first on the machine. That's our welding amps, which is our max amps. So when our pulse is on, what's the maximum amperage we want? We're gonna set that at 100. Then we'll go in and we'll do pulse time on. We'll set this one at 80. So 80% 80 of the time, we're gonna be at that 100 amps. Now, if you push it again, we get the pulse amps, which is our background amps. So what percentage of the max amperage are we gonna get? And we're gonna leave that at 10%. So 10% of 100 is 10 amps. So when it's on, it'll be 100 amps. When it's off in its background phase, it'll be 10 amps. And next we'll set up that frequency. And so that's how often per second are we gonna do this? And we'll leave that at one, one pulse per second. So when we come over to the board, here's what that looks like. We set our amps at 100 amps. We set our pulse time on at 80, and we had our background amps at 10. And then this is our one pulses per second. So we're only getting one of these cycles in a second. So now that we have all of our settings input, let's go ahead and get under the hood. We'll strike an arc and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so we initiate our arc the same way with the pedal, and you'll already see that we are getting that on time and then background amps. So when we're using the pulse, we get this exaggerated dimed look. Even though we didn't add any filler, we still get this look of filler because we have our 100 amp pulse and then we have our 10 amp background. So that blast of amperage and then where the puddle almost freezes again, that's what gives us this look. So the idea is to get less average amperage heat input for the same weld. So now we're just gonna change one variable. We're gonna leave our 100 amps and we're gonna leave our 80% on time and we're gonna leave our background amps at 10%, but we're gonna change our frequency. So from one pulses per second, we're gonna go to three pulses per second. So over the same time, we'll be doing this up and down wave three times and you'll see how that will tighten up the arc. So on the machine, we have to select we're gonna leave our pulse time and our pulse amps 
but we're going to turn up this frequency to three pulses per second and then we'll show you 10 pulses per second. Okay, so now we have three pulses per second. So we're going to be running that cycle three times as fast. And you'll see how it really tightens up the puddle. Okay, so you can see our three pulses per second bead is much narrower despite relatively the same travel speed. The ripples are not nearly as obvious because it's happening three times as often and we definitely put a little bit less heat input. You can see that our gray area is smaller and even on the end of the weld it didn't go fully gray. So we'll swap to 10 pulses per second run it here and it'll give us a good range to see what happens. So the higher the frequency the more it tightens up that puddle. So now we're running 10 pulses per second. You can see even visually the difference in how fast it's flashing. But also now the puddle starts to become pretty smooth. So we're running enough pulses per second that it's starting to feel less like a pulse puddle and more like a DC puddle. So you can see this 10 pulses per second bead has much tighter ripples in it. It's much narrower and the sides are much straighter because as I mentioned it's much more like running a DC puddle. You don't have these big blasts of amperage. You have so many of them per second that it becomes less perceivable. So this bead will have good penetration but it's a little bit narrower than that one. You can see I've slowed down because now it's starting to tighten the puddle enough that the puddle doesn't run forward the same way it does in the lower pulses. So pulse is very specific per application. It's important to know what it is, but you have to know how it works best for your application. Some applications will work great with one, some will work better with 10, and some might require the 500, which is the max that your PowerTig 255 will go to. Okay, so now that we've covered the basic setup and the basic pulse settings, the next video we're gonna get into some stainless. This is Chris McQuay from Unobtainium Welding, Weld Mean, Weld Green.